Hey everyone, it's Hindash. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a while to say the least. <laughs> I'm so excited to be back with a bunch of brand new videos I'm doing this weekly. So there will be a schedule set and I've been working on a lot of stuff. We are joined with Cosmo here who is going to be accompanying me in part one and then we can bring in Timmy. So today's video features the beautiful Zainab and you might have seen this video on TikTok and I really wanted to bring it to YouTube more in depth, longer, um, really talking through the entire process and how I achieved this look. This look features more of a graphic eye. It's pretty lifted, but surprisingly quite natural. I think because you have that beautiful blend of the browns that really create this elevated eye shape. And I thought it would be the perfect video to kind of jumpstart the YouTube series and my return to YouTube <laughs> because it's a classic look. It's very me. It has that touch of that really lifted brown eyeshadow, liner, wing situation, <laughs> and it's fun. Look at Cosmo looking all cute for the camera. So much stealing Timmy's spotlight. <laughs> and for those of you that have missed Timmy, here he is. And he's looking as cute as ever with his little haircut. <laughs> so as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Bye. Okay, looking at this now, I don't know how I said this was a natural eye look, but you know what I mean. The overall vibe of the look feels very classic me. So starting off with skincare, I'm going to be applying a soothing mist all over the face to prep her skin. I'm using a hyaluronic acid for my serum as part of skin prep, but you can go ahead and include your usual skincare routine. I tend to stay away from actives when I'm working on models or clients because obviously I don't know how their skin will react and it doesn't really add any benefit to my makeup application and overall work. So I'm keeping things very basic and simple. However, I'll always take the time to really massage the skin and make the model feel relaxed and at ease. I always say that my skincare application is also a really great way for me to start mapping out my client's features and what would suit them best in terms of makeup application and style. So for makeup artists, my tip is to really take your time with skincare and use that as a method to brainstorm what will look best on your client. Now moving on to eye cream. This is a deeply nourishing one, so I'm adding kind of a thicker layer because it will act as a primer for concealer. And make sure you tap this around the eyes to further depuff and get that circulation going. With whatever is left, I like to go around the brow bone. And for moisturizer, I'm going with something lightweight. This really sinks into the skin. And I'm going to be applying that all over the face and down the neck. This is where I'll take the time to massage it into the skin and get around the contours of the face and really work it in. Looking at Zainab, the first thing I notice are her eyes. She has beautiful lid space and high eyebrows. So my instinct is to really accentuate that shape which is where the extremely lifted eyeshadow work comes in. And speaking of eyes, I'm applying a depuffing eye mask. And to really jumpstart the depuffing effect, I'm taking my cryo globes that I've kept in the fridge and going over the contours of the face. This is definitely an extra treat that I love giving the models. It always wakes them up and just energizes their skin. It's a must have in the Dubai heat. After I'm done, I can start my eyeshadow work. I'm taking an eyeshadow base and applying that all over the eyelid and up to the brow bone but I'm never applying the product directly to the brow bone, but blending the leftover upwards. This makes sure that the entire eye space is smooth and not cakey. The concentration has to be on the eyelid. And I'm doing that with a fluffy synthetic brush so we get an even blend. This base is neutralizing any discoloration, but also acting as a neutral background for the colors that I want to use. If I'm doing more of a natural smoky eye, I would actually want to work with her natural eyelid color. In that case, it will work to our advantage. So I would then go for my color fluid in the shade Carve, which is a beautiful tan brown, or leave it as is with a bit of concealer. Now that we're done, I'm continuing the cream process by taking my Hint Dash Eye Tone Pencil in the shade Intra, which is an ultra creamy, warm chocolate brown. I'll start by creating a soft wing close to the lash line, about halfway, and then with a smaller, dense brush, blending it outwards. As I'm blending, I'm keeping the line quite sharp as it comes to a very thin wing and blending that liner inwards until it softly blends towards the inner corner, making sure I'm getting in between the lashes, and adding more for intensity after the blending is done, to keep it saturated. I'm tightlining the inner corners. I feel like this really complements that lifted shape. Now I'm softly mapping out the crease in a curved V shape. I don't need to be too precise with this, because the blending is going to determine the shape. I'm focusing on blending towards the crease to emphasize her eye shape, and when I get to the corner, diffusing it out. All the work that I do with creams and pencils act like my first background layer. So when I go in with powders, I'm using them to set and intensify, adding dimension. This is what makes everything look airbrushed. 
And as you can see, we've created a seamless soft blend. That's basically like a brown gradient. Now I'm taking my most used product of all time, my Butopsy Gradient Palette. Going in with tan, I'm diffusing and setting the edges. This not only sets the pencil work that I've done, but it further creates this airbrushed finish. What I love most about my powders is that they can go on sheer and buildable, and you get zero fallout. And it allows you to work and build up dimension, which creates a flawless finish on all skin types. Extremely forgiving. Now I'm taking a mix of tan and wet and applying that all over the eyelid to really highlight and brighten. Again, accentuating that shape. I'm not packing it on just yet, just creating a wash of color. Next, I'm going in with Feel, which is a tan caramel brown, and using this to go over the crease work and blending outwards. So now we're building up the layers of soft browns, and I'm stopping about halfway. With whatever is left on the brush, I can bring it towards the brow for subtle dimension. Now we can go in with Intra, the chocolate brown that matches the pencil. And with the same brush we used to blend the pencil, I'm basically packing on the brown to intensify and set it. I want the most saturation and intensity on the lash line. And with whatever is left on the brush, adding that to the outer crease. You really get an extremely airbrushed blend. I'm now taking my Hero Line eyeliner, which features a brush tip, and using that to create a very thin line across the lash line. I added individual lashes, so I always love doing this to conceal any gaps. So basically stamping along the side of the eyeliner. Now that my eye work is basically done, I'm removing the under eye patches. I'm going in with the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, and the way I'm applying this is basically like a tinted moisturizer, so focusing on very thin layers. I'm really working this around the edges of the face, buffing and tapping it in. My philosophy with foundation is that I want it to even out the skin, but I'm not relying on it to conceal everything, because that's what concealer is for. And that is my way of achieving a very fresh base. I'm also taking this down the jawline and neck, which is very important especially if you're being photographed or out in natural light. You want the tone to be seamless throughout. So as you see side by side, there's not a dramatic difference, but it's more of an even tone. And the major difference I see by applying foundation this way is that you really let the foundation do its job, formula-wise. It is the most true to what the foundation claims to be. Another huge tip is to always do less on the forehead. This is where you tend to be more expressive as well, at least for me personally, and that's the first place that shows heavy makeup. So apply a little right above the middle of the brows and blend away, keeping in mind that we still might do cream bronzer and that will add another layer of coverage. The same theory applies to the nose. Apply as little as you can and blend away. And now the base is done. I'm taking a cream bronzer and with a fluffier synthetic brush, I'm going to start applying this high up on the cheekbones and blending upwards keeping in mind that I still haven't done concealer. I'm also taking this on the sides of the jaw and down the neck, and to keep the tones uniform throughout the face and body, a little underneath the chin, and on top of the forehead close to the hairline, really blending this in. With whatever is left, I'm taking this down the bridge of the nose and the tip. I always love doing this. Now that I'm done bronzing the entire face, we can move on to concealer. I'm starting off with a peachy tone to cancel out any discoloration and evenly diffusing it on my beauty blender first. I'll start pushing this and tapping it in, focusing on the center, and then moving inwards and out. I'm also getting around the contours of the nose and bridge, and around the mouth. And now with the lighter shade, I'm bringing this just on the center of the face. This will be my highlight to bring brightness on the face. We can then move on to setting the face. I'm taking a loose powder with a yellow beige undertone and with a brush, tapping and setting the areas I worked on underneath the eyes, and moving around the nose. With whatever is left on the brush, I'm going over the entire face. For cream blush, I'm actually taking my Manifesto lipstick in Call Me Peaches, and I'm taking this warm peach right over the bronzer and high up in stippling motions, feathering slightly into the apples of the cheeks, and a touch down the bridge of the nose and forehead. And now I can move on to the lower lash line, I'm taking feel and blending it towards the center of the lower lash line, creating almost like a halo effect. So I'm concentrating the color on both corners to really accentuate her lower lash line. With my Monochromance palette, I'm taking Alter Ego and using this as a nose contour. This is the perfect ashy gray tone. I'm applying this underneath and over the tip of the nose. I'll then take a champagne highlighter and spot conceal the tip of the nose, bridge, cupid's bow, chin, and the center of the lower lash line. This will really create a spotlight effect, applying a bit on the corners as well. 
For blush dimension, I'm taking a shimmery bubblegum pink blush to pair with the creamy peach underneath. This will also act as my highlight. I love the multi-dimension it gives the cheeks. For brows, I'm using an ash brown and focusing on extending and filling in the tail of the brow, following her shape. I'm also using the shape of our lifted shadow as a guide. And I'm going to barely apply any product as I'm moving in for a softer, more natural look. And with a brow pen, adding tiny strokes throughout, again focusing on the ends. This is great if you're extending your brows and want to add hair-like dimensions to the sparse areas. If I'm adding a bit to the front, I prefer doing this with a brow pen. For the lower lashes, I'm taking mascara on a lash fan brush for a softer look, and then wiggling that through the base to the tip. This allows me to almost just tint the lashes without adding any weight or clump. For lips, I'm starting off with my lip tone pencil in Hush and lining her lips. This is a beautiful caramel nude that's going to act as my first base. And for deeper definition, I'm taking my eye tone pencil in Intra again, but this time defining the corners, bottom lip and top lip. Then when I'm done defining the lip, I'm going to take a lip brush and softly blend and blur the edges. And I'm doing that to blend it into the nude lip liner underneath creating beautiful dimension. And now taking my favorite lipstick ever, this is my Manifesto lipstick in Rest in Roses. It is a hydrating matte tinted balm, so you can apply it really sheer as a lip stain or build it up. I'm using this all over the lip to blend everything together seamlessly. And tapping Call Me Peaches over the center of the lip. This creates a really beautiful rosy nude. And because the eyes are matte, I want to pair the lips with a bit of gloss. And I'm going for a sheer pink and accentuating her beauty marks. And this is the final look on Zainab. I really hope you enjoyed this more in-depth tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I can't wait to see you in next week's video. And you can find me on all socials at Hindash. Bye.